Okay, so let's take a look at um, looking at more of left and right hand, right, left and right inverses. So this is an important fact here that we want to work with is that some functions have only a left inverse or only a right inverse, but they might not have both. So remember, we had left left inverses and we had right inverses and then we had the inverse if it's a function was both the left and the right inverses. So in this case, if we found something that is a left inverse but not a right inverse, it is not the inverse function. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here. So if we have f is going to map the reals into just the non-negative reals. So these are this is the interval 0 to infinity. Yes, this is a set. It is an interval of numbers. And so we're going to define this by the rule of any number, any real number, I am going to square it. That is my function. And this makes sense. This is a well-defined function. You take any real number, you square it, you get something between 0 to infinity. Great. Now we have these questions. Does f have a left inverse? Does f have a right inverse? So you can think, which one? Does it have both? Does it have neither? This function here, I don't know. So let's take a look at asking some questions about a left inverse. So let's look at a left inverse. So if this has a left inverse, remember we said that that's going to be a function g, we'll call that g here, it has to have the opposite domain and codomain as my original function. So let's take the left inverse, we're going to say uh, suppose there is some g which is going to map the positive or the, the non-negatives into the reals. So suppose there is some g um, where g is a function. And we also have that if it's the left inverse, remember that's going to be where g is on the left side of f. So we have g of f of x is equal to x. This is going to be true for all x in the reals. So remember, when we had the left inverse, g is on the left, x is going to have to come from the domain of f. So that means that everything in the reals has to have the, has to have the property that I plug it in to f, then it goes into g, then we get the original number back out. Okay, so let's see what happens if this would be the case. So let's say there is a left inverse after all. So let's take a look at some, some numbers, for instance, right? So let's take a look at um, if we let x be equal to 3. Well, all of you skilled mathematicians are able to see then that f of 3 is equal to 9. Great. Then we look at g of 9 question is, what does that equal? Well, we know exactly what that should equal. This should equal 3, right? Because what we need is that we need to have f, or we need to have g of f of 3 to be equal to 3, right? So we said that we have this property must be true, so if I put in 3, this must be true. Now, if we let x be equal to negative 3, then f of negative 3, again, using your mathematical prowess, you see that this would end up also being 9. So I have g of 9 is equal to negative 3. And this is, again, because we need this, is that we need that g of f of negative 3 is equal to negative 3. Right? So for this to be a well-defined composition, or a well-defined inverse, we need to have this be true as well as this. But what do we notice? I have this statement, g of 9 is equal to 3. g of 9 is equal to negative 3. What do we think? Exactly, this is not a function, right? A function says that every input is only allowed to have exactly one output. So we're trying to say that g is a well-defined function, but you put in 9, I now need to magically get both 3 and negative 3 to appear. And so what we notice here is that g is not a function. 
So this is now a major issue that all we did was say, what if there was something? I didn't have any requirements of what what rules this has to follow, if this is the square root, negative square root, anything like that. We just simply said this is just an arbitrary function where it follows the correct domain and codomain and the rules that we must have for inverses, and we see that we got some issue. So the important takeaway here is that f does not have a left inverse. So this function, f of x equals x squared, that we have here, defined with this domain and codomain, does not have a left inverse. Now remember, 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 that when we talk about a function, there's three necessary things to define this. We need to have the domain, the codomain, and the rule that defines all of the elements into our Cartesian product. So if we change things, maybe something will be different. But in the next video, we're going to address this question. Does F have a right inverse?